Is it a game of chicken between you and Mr Daly at the moment? No, no, Laura, absolutely not. No, this is a democratic process. Uh, Michael's absolutely entitled to put his hand up. I'm putting my hand up too. I think the Labor Party needs a positive direction in New South Wales. We need to focus on what's possible and start being the party of ideas and solutions in this state. Why, has, why is he running? He's already had a turn, hasn't he? <laughs> well, I'm sure Michael will come on the program and explain his candidacy. But look, we're, we're a democratic party. We have these processes in place. Uh, everybody's entitled to put their hand up and... I think both of our job is to go to the party membership and tell them what we would do if we got the leadership. Why wouldn't Michael Daly stand aside for you? Uh, look, Laura, I have no idea. I mean, uh, he's, he's entitled to put his hand up. Um, I think the focus for New South Wales Labor, though, once this is over, is really on the people of New South Wales and making sure that they know that we're on their side and that our, our, our efforts and our thoughts aren't on ourselves, but actually on their interests and their concerns mm. and their future. Well, how do you think the best process would be? What is the best process to really, really bring this to a head, to conclude it? I mean, you and Michael Daly are in the same party. Couldn't you just sit down, uh, work this out, um, you know, discuss who might be best leader between the both of you? Or do you think you really need to draw this out for a couple of months? Yeah, well, look, of course I'd sit down with Michael or any of my colleagues about the future direction of the Labor Party. Mm. He might not agree that I'm the best person to lead the Labor Party, so I don't want to put those words in his mouth, but obviously always open for a discussion. But, look, democracy is important too. It can be messy. No-one's suggesting it's, um, it's just the best form of party organisation that the Labor Party has. We've embraced it over the last five years. Everybody's got a right to put their hand up. But I do... I am a little bit worried, and I do accept that the focus of New South Wales Labor can't be on ourselves. We can't just be navel-gazing about the Labor Party, having mm. endless discussions about it. This organisation only exists for the people of this state and that's what we need to get back to as soon as possible. Well, Michael Daly and you, as I understand it, haven't always had the best relationship. Have you had discussions? I mean, is there any chance of you sitting down together and working this out? Or is he just trying to uh, run to no. cut you down to size a bit? Uh, look... I, I'm, I don't know. I mean, you'd have to speak to him, but um, I'm always keen to give peace a chance. And uh, Michael and I have been colleagues for a long time, uh, six years. I've known him for a long time too. Of course, I'd talk to him about mm. the future direction of the Labor Party. Um, but um, I can't tell him to withdraw his nomination. He's got every right no. to put his hand up, uh, as do I. And I think the job over the next few days is talk to our colleagues about who's going to present the best plan to take the fight up to the government and mm. who's, got, who's got a positive vision for New South Wales. My view is we just can't be negative. Our, our focus can't be just putting out negative press releases against the government. We're not going to get off the mat unless we've got positive solutions for the future of the state. Would you have Mr Daly in your shadow cabinet? Look, I think it's just too presumptuous of me to be uh, dealing out um, positions in a shadow cabinet uh, when I don't even have the leadership. As much as it's tempting to start speculating about that on Sky this morning, <laughs> I need to talk to my colleagues about that. OK, but a lot of your colleagues would be maybe a little bit concerned about you becoming leader, thinking that there might be recriminations for those that don't support you. Would you promise no recriminations? Look, would you have Michael Daly in your shadow cabinet? Maybe Adam Searle too? Would he stay where he is? Well, look, I, I, it would be just too forward of me to start laying out uh, a potential shadow cabinet when I don't have the leadership and I haven't had those discussions with my colleagues. Um, but of course I'd promise no recriminations. Um, the Labor Party has got a long road ahead of it. The Berejiklian government is popular. There's no point mm. in, in uh, supposing otherwise. And if we're just focused on ourselves and on you know petty grievances, Laura, we really have no chance in March 2023. We need to start focusing on the electorate before ourselves. Well, Jody McKay said it wasn't about being popular. What do you think? Well, I think it's about solutions to the problems facing this state. I mean, if we're positive about what could, is possible in New South Wales, and I said uh, right here yesterday, actually, that I think that wherever possible and whenever possible, uh, my job as the Leader of the Opposition is to explain to the people of New South Wales what we do differently, not just what the government's done wrong. And well, what would you I think do differently? A good, an, 
I think we need to focus on positive policies for the future of the state. I think we need to start coming up with those solutions. In particular, Laura, I'm concerned about tolls in Sydney. Some families are paying more than $5,000 a year in tolls to a private toll company. I'm concerned about regional manufacturing as well. Most states around Australia have strong regional manufacturing sectors and hubs that drive and stimulate good middle class jobs, particularly in the regions. That's something that this state could be doing too. That'll be a focus of my job as Leader of the Opposition. But you've also said you want to see more bipartisanship. It sounds like in many ways you're just trying to hitch your wagon to the success of the Berejiklian government when it comes to COVID. No, not at all. I mean, I just don't think there's much utility in criticising the government for what has been a good COVID response. I mean, I don't think there should be politics in a pandemic. And ultimately, uh, my constituents don't want us criticising the government until we get through this COVID pandemic. I mean, I've got kids that I want to see in school and not on Zoom. I've got elderly relatives that I don't want exposed to this disease. So whether you're on the government side or the opposition side, we're all on Team New South Wales as we try and get through this horrible disease. But where would your bipartisanship end? Doesn't the government deserve some scrutiny? Look at New Newmarch House, the Ruby Princess. Would you have offered bipartisanship there? Well, obviously, they said they've made mistakes and it's the job of the Leader of the Opposition and the Opposition to point them out. But the point here is I don't want to be a carping presence on the sideline needlessly criticising them. I want them to focus on defeating this horrible disease so that we can focus on the future. And I will say this. I think there will be a contest and a battle of ideas for the future of this state. I think the real question in March 2023 will be who has the better vision for our society and our economy once this pandemic is over. Mm. And that'll be the focus of the New South Wales opposition. OK, one final question, Chris Minns. How will you be different to Jody? Or are you just Jody in a suit? <laughs> well, look, obviously I'm different to Jody, but my focus will be on positive politics. I think we need to start offering solutions to what's happening in the state. I think that the opposition doesn't have to oppose everything the government does, and my job will not be to tear down the government. It'll be better, it will be to present a case that's better than the government at the next election in March 2023. Chris Minns, thanks for your time. Thanks, Laura.